Good afternoon. Uh, I had my revenge all mapped out until I knew you were filling out evaluation forms. <laughs> <laughs> so I just want to start by saying that the, the 12 translators in my workshop are geniuses. <laughs> This, this experience is, is uh, uh, bittersweet. Um, I've had texts translated before, some without any questions at all, like the Portuguese. They just sent me the book and you know, it, was, it was done. Uh, some, like the French, will ask, ask a little bit, but never like this, never, never hands on, and never in a language which is uh, my stronger language, English. Um, and here I should perhaps just say a few words. Uh, although I write in Spanish, I grew up in the States. And English replaced my Spanish. It replaced is a, is a strong word. Um, although Spanish is my mother tongue, English is my stepmother tongue, <laughs> so to say. Um, sometimes they get along, these two women. Um, <laughs> sometimes they don't. Uh, but as I'm writing in Spanish, I'm thinking in English. Most of the time. So, the sentence starts off in English in my head. I simultaneously translate it onto the page in Spanish. So what happened this week is that you 12 were translating back into English. I knew the, the sentence in English in my head that you were trying to get back to. You didn't, you didn't know this. Yeah. Sometimes what you wound up with was better, which is fantastic. Most of the time, it's, it's, it was better. Um, but so the, the, the experience for me is, is very strange you know, to, to try to get uh, to face that, that translation, something which would not happen in any other language because I don't have any other language, like I do in English and Spanish. Um, the texts that we translated then are uh, in many ways better. I don't know if that stems from the fact that I'm just bored of reading them in Spanish, and so uh, a new version is that much more exciting. Um, in several instances, I found myself wanting to edit the Spanish, yeah. just because what, what they had done was better uh, than what was on the printed page. I, I suppose it demanded a close reading that you probably haven't given yes. those pieces. I don't know how recently yeah. you wrote them, but if you wrote them some time ago, you wouldn't have done that for some yes, time. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Um, not frightening, Sarah, you used the word fright, terrifying, you said. Uh, terrifying. Something like that, yeah. yeah not, not terrifying at <laughs> all, um, you know, to let this piece be analyzed so much. Um, I understood one of the pieces better than I did before this process, mm -hmm. um, or I understood certain aspects that I had done, I don't know, subconsciously or, or you know, from where that came from that I didn't know before. So, so that was very interesting. Yeah, I wish I wish I could say something like that I'm terrified or traumatized or at least uh, shocked in a major way what happened to me in this week, but but I cannot because it was also pleasant. <laughs> Sometimes I suffer a lot when I sit at home and I, um, I write full time. So I'm um, often many days alone. And I think, God, I wish I, I had a group of people that I could work with. And, they, and if I imagined them, they would be all beautiful and smart, <laughs> clever, talented. They would all speak several languages. Um, and they would be funny. And so I had this experience this week. And, <laughs> and it, was, it was really very nice, just as Ed said. And, Actually, they put their fingers on many spots where I thought, oh, Jesus, why did I not see that before? And, and more, why did my editor did not see that before? <laughs> I'm going to go back home and ask him a couple of questions. <laughs> so, <clears throat> and what, what was striking me was that um, when I wrote the novel, I, was, I had my story, my core, and I was putting on layers. First, like the structure line, the corpus of the story and then sentences, words, 
And now we took all these layers off. We didn't consider so much the story of the whole book, but we looked at the sentences, then at the words, the commas, the semicolons. So it was like we stripped the text again, and just so it could stand up in English with a bigger distance for me, and I can walk it, walk in it like in a room, in a different poetic room, in a different sphere. I see the story again, and not so much my work, which uh, which I know very well, where I struggled, where. I had to write it again, or a spot that I didn't really like, and now in English it's, it's someone else's work, really, that for me also is enjoyable, although I have been reading it so many times. <laughs> I'm not sure about that. Uh, I just feel like uh, it's a wonderful thing if the translator wants the author to be involved to a certain extent. To me, it's good. It depends on the situation as well. I've got like two translators working with me almost at the same time. One is Nikki, one is the one from another European country. <laughs> like the two of them working in very different style. And both of them would ask me questions. The other translator would give me like a, uh, 48 questions, like three days time. Like, um, and Nikki would ask me questions as well, but Nikki did her own homework, okay? Because mm -hmm. mine is an epic story, like uh, five generations, uh, sort of uh, in a span of 150 years, very long, complicated, and heavy, and dark, and everything. Um, Nikki, I am just amazed that she's never asked me or hardly asked me any question about the place names because some of the, or we'll talk about the building of the Pacific, Pacific Railway by the Chinese coolies. So the places they've been, they're not big places. They're not, Van, not just Vancouver and Victoria and things like that. They're tiny little towns yeah. along the railway chap, uh, track. You know. <coughs> Nikki did all her homework. She would never ask me questions like that. I was very amazed. I think she's an amazing translator, very professional. But certain things, when she needs to communicate with me, I think we got a pretty nice flow. And ego does not stand in the way. We respect each other like equal sort of partner. Our sole purpose is to produce a really nice, beautiful, sort of um, flowy, that's sort of English test. Mm -hmm. With that common goal in mind, uh, I feel like we worked pretty well as a team. Yes, indeed, actually. I, this, is the, this is the first time I work this close with a translator. The, the, the and the previous uh, experiences, actually, I, um, one of them had, oh, I was in Canada, and the translator was in Abu Dhabi, and the editor was in London, so. <laughs> we all com communicated in the email and, and it was like, you know, with a minimum, you know, um, questions and answers that goes, you know, along with the, with the, with the text. Uh, but um, I, I had, I had, you know, I had, um, um, I, I expected it to be, to, to be done, you know, uh, in a similar way. So when I, I was sitting in the, in the, in the, in the session actually, I expected a, a pastor base of translation All right. and I was struck by that it took us sometimes you know 10 minutes to you know translate three four words <laughs> so I was like wow that's a job that I don't want to do <laughs> 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 so, um, and you know I was I was actually enjoying it because it's my text and, and watching it being transformed into a different mm -hmm. language is enjoyable for me because I'm the owner of the of the of the, um, uh, of, of the, te of the text but for the translator, is not, that may not necessarily have this attachment with the with the, with the text. I feel I have sometimes I feel bad for them. You know, it's like you, know, you don't do you don't need to have to do that. You know, <laughs> and sometimes when I come to the session, you know, like five minutes late or ten minutes late, and they you know they come in the morning with the, with the coffee and they start working on my text, and I feel I feel bad. Yeah. <laughs> I'm 
Based on her experiences this week and seeing how uh, enthusiastic all of us were about translating her work, she sort of feels that uh, everyone in this workshop is uh, more enthusiastic about Japanese literature than anybody who she knows in Japan. <laughs> <laughs> Usually she's used to having just one person work on her text at a time, and this is this group translation, which is an extremely uh, different experience. Normally you have one translator and everything happens inside that one person's head. <laughs> so what she was seeing in front of her own eyes this week was a very peculiar thing that was very interesting to her. And normally, you know, I, uh, when she went with writing, she chooses between words, I'll include this one, I'll leave this one out, just like we were doing. だから、and what leaves a strong impression on her is that how uh, all of the different people in the group would uh, reach towards different uh, words in the same language, but that it's still towards the same kind of essence, and how many different routes uh, there are to get to that one spot um, as part of the work of the translator. And uh, so based on this experience, she uh, it strengthened her resolve that uh, no matter what sort of text you have and what language you're talking about, there's a possibility to uh, render it across the, that divide. So uh, に、あの、